Hello fellow coffee motherers. In this video, I'm gonna be setting up and using the DeLonghi Le Specialista Arte. I tried to do this in this video, which ended up mainly being an unboxing video as it wouldn't work. It just pumped water through the bottom of the machine. I took it to my espresso engineer friend, Radu, who repairs home espresso machines, and I'll put his details in the description in case you've got a machine that needs fixing. And he tells me that the plastic piece that connects the pump to the pipe had sheared off. It's not the best first impression because there was no damage to the outer box or inner box and I can't see how this would have happened in transit without causing obvious damage. Just seems like this one tiny inexpensive plastic part wasn't up to the challenge and the initial fill broke it. But to be fair to the Longhi, there's always a possibility for issues like this. They did send me this machine just after they released this model so it could be an early unit with a batch issue that they've since addressed. In any case, I reckon it's very unlikely that you'll experience the same issue I did. Anyway, it's working now, so let's get it set up. Okay then, so initial setup, wash and dry everything, all the accessories, all that's already been done. So just imagine you're watching me doing that, done. And now insert the drip tray, already done, and fill the water tank. So I'm just gonna fill the water tank with water, obviously. Insert the filter basket into the filter, port filter. Done. It's actually quite a nice, sort of balanced water filter really. This bit feels like it's fairly hollow plastic, but then I think there's a bit of weight here in the end. And this is obviously metal. And you've got metal splitter, which is good, not a plastic splitter. In the porta filter, there is a bit of plastic in the bottom, which I'm not a massive fan of, but you do get that in a lot of the porta filters, including the Sage porta filters, to be fair. Attach the porta filter. Okay, and done. Push OK to rinse. So I'm going to put a jug of some description under the port filter so I'm not filling a drip tray up how I do that. Turn it on. There's a button around here somewhere on the uh, back left hand side as you're looking at the machine. You can see it's warming up. Ready? So that's pretty quick. I'm not sure if it says how long it is but it's only seconds I reckon. And it's allegedly heated up but obviously the group and everything else isn't. So as with the Sage machines, you'd want to flush water through the group with the port filter inserted for your first shot to warm everything up. And then after that, I'd always recommend pulling flushes after each shot. And if you're doing sort of a few a few back-to-back -back shots, you don't need to keep putting the port filter back in and flushing through the port filter because that'll be kept warm from each shot you pull in. So I would just do each flush just into the cup straight from the group just to keep everything warmed up. Push OK to rinse. Okay, that's a good sign. We've got water coming out of the porter filter this time rather than coming out the bottom of the machine. So all good so far. Now push the steam button and let the steam flower for a few seconds and push the button again. And beans to the hopper. Fresh is best it says. That's good. I agree. Fill with just the quantity you'll need. Again, I agree. Store the remainder of your beans in a vacuum container. I'm quite impressed with that, that it's telling you what I always say, which is never store beans in the hopper because the hopper isn't ever going to be airtight. So it'll just go stale. So just use the beans. Just chuck the beans in you're about to use. So we'll do that. Okay, so we're following the instructions. We've added beans to the hopper, filled the water tank and we are ready to pull shots. And it tells you on here, recommended grinding settings, depending on how light or how dark your beans are. These, I'd say, medium dark espresso. See there, 
the dark brown and matte. So I would call them medium dark espresso beans. Now the instruction manual seems to suggest that you can use this machine with really light, extra light beans because when it comes to the uh, dust, <laughs> dust, the dose adjustment, it's got from extra light through to extra dark. I don't know why the longer would be telling you to use extra light beans with a machine like this. Go for an espresso roast profile. Don't go for anything that just says medium or says omni roast. Go for a freshly roasted bean from a small batch supplier, small batch roaster, or a supplier that sells freshly roasted coffee beans with a roasted on date on, but I would go for an espresso. Go for something that is actually sold as an espresso profile or, or an espresso blend. This is, this is an espresso blend, but it's, it's, a, it's slightly on the lighter side for espresso. It's not the classic, super dark, like classic Italian roast, which is normally sort of dark brown to black and shiny, and shiny because the oils have been released and are glistening on the surface. It's same for light roast, go to three to four, medium, medium, ro dark roast, go to four to five, in terms of grind size, dark, five or six. I've got it at four, I'm gonna try it at four. And then in terms of the dose, so that this, I'm assuming this is seconds, or whether it's just a reference, but it's how long it grinds for. And it's saying that for a medium dark, it's showing around 15 seconds. So I'm gonna set it to, in fact, I'm just gonna set it to 20 seconds. And I'm gonna wait and see how much we end up with in the basket. I'm gonna purge this lot, it's the first one I've done, so I'm gonna chuck this away. You don't have to, if you dial in properly and click here to watch my dialing in video I've done recently, but if you are dialing in properly, you will want to purge. This is what we call ex uh, exchange retention, exchanged retention. So it's any grinds that you ground last time that come through and end up in your next basket. So by purging some, when you changed the grind size or the first time you're grinding in the morning, you're making sure all the ground coffee in there is fresh and is at the same grind size. So I'm gonna purge that. And before we start the first shot, pull. I'm gonna flush through the porter filter into the cup so we're warming everything up, including the porter filter. Notice we have some pre-infusion there, about eight seconds, I'd say, of pre-infusion. And I'm just using this jug to empty water into so I don't have to mess around emptying the drip tray, although it's fairly decent size. Drip tray by the looks of it. So the porter filter's warmed up now. It's giving me 16.6. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at 16.6 grams. I'm going to pretend it's 17 because it's easier for me to work out ratio. <laughs> so if I'm going one to two, which is what I would normally do in terms of ratio, 17 grams of coffee, 34 grams of espresso. You can actually they say in the manual, tamp with the dosing ring on. And actually that's, we take that off. It's actually quite a nice level put without taking that off. And I think that's just simply because with this on, you've not got much room to put it on anything but straight. If you drop it, it is just level. So that's quite nice. So you can either just do that, give it a tamp, or you can do that, take the funnel off, the ring off, and then do it again if you want. Either or. I'm gonna stop it at about 30 seconds. The window I'd normally go for is 28 to 32 seconds. So I'm just gonna stop it at 30 seconds and see what we've got. And if we're somewhere near dialed in, we should be from about 17 grams to about 34. So we should be aiming for about 34 grams. You don't have to do one to two. You can do one to 2.5, you can do one to three. One to three really is more like lungo, but who cares? Whatever you prefer. But I usually prefer one to two extra, uh, one to two ratio. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna aim to 34 grams in about 30 seconds. So press the time button on the scales. These are the, the My Way Barista scales. Not a bad set of scales at all for the cash. They're only about 30 pounds, 30, 35, something like that. And you know, you can pay a heck of a lot more for 
brew scales and these are actually okay they, um, they hold the charge really really well as i found out and they're really durable you know big chunky things about eight second pre-infusion and the gauge we're not quite in the middle If I let it run for 30 seconds, we've got like 66, 68 grams. So that was far too fast a shot. I'm gonna change the grind to three as the grinder's running. The reason we're gonna do it as the grinder's running is we're putting the burrs closer to each other. So if we don't do it while it's running and there's a bit of coffee being stuck in between, we can actually set the burrs out of alignment. So it's good practice to keep it running while you're going finer. When you're going coarser, you're moving the burrs further apart, so it doesn't matter. But when you're going finer, I would recommend doing it while the grinder is running. I've changed to three, I'm purging some because I don't know what the exchange retention amount is with this, with this machine, but there will be some. It might be three, four, five grams or something like that. I'm not sure with this machine, but if you purge half a basket, it should be about right. So let's... For 17 grams again. 17 grams. Flush. About eight seconds of pre-infusion. Hmm. So 68 grams and 30 seconds. It's strange, it's like I've changed the grind size, but nothing's happened. Try that again. Changing to grind, uh, grind size three has made virtually no difference. Still got like 72, 73 grams in 30 seconds. Bit weird, I'd imagine the uh, grind settings to, to really jump because there's only eight of them. But from four to three, no difference. So let's try two. And stop it at 30 seconds. 39. So we've got 39 grams in 30 seconds then from 17 grams. So we're still a bit fast and we're down to grind size two. We've only got one grind step left, but actually that isn't bad. It's not perfect, but it's a nice hot shot. And I think most people will be quite happy with that. A little bit under extracted, but if you're using a decent coffee, using a you know freshly roasted espresso blend or espresso roast profile it should be quite forgiving you shouldn't end up with ridiculously sour shots if you end up under extracting with you know the shot flowing too fast it should for most people depending on your palate you know if you're not a competition level barista you should find that if you buy the right beans if you buy freshly roasted espresso profile beans you should be okay it should be quite forgiving and you know that is okay it's not perfectly dialed in this isn't a dialed in video i just want to know what this grind is capable of and whether or not i'm right in thinking it should have more than eight grind settings so i'm just going to take it down to number one and see what happens hmm. puck stuck first time that's happened that can happen sometimes the puck will just stick for no apparent reason and you have to fish it out but does happen with all espresso machines occasionally purging plenty of coffee to make sure that we're all the coffee in the next basket is at this new grind level flush Pressure gauge has gone all the way over. Again, we don't know what this is because it doesn't tell us. There's no, there's no uh, readings. Anyway, we are much slower now. So the jump from two to one seems to be much bigger than from four to two, from what I can gather. We're already at 35 seconds. We're at 18 grams. We're gonna stop it there. Wait. So after 35, 35 seconds there, we only had 18 grams. So when we went to two, we were still 
uh, under extracted too fast. We've changed it to one and now we're far too slow. The last shot was better. That shot is over extracted. So bitter, it's not, not particularly pleasant. The last shot actually been a little bit under extracted, a bit too fast, was okay. It's really peculiar how these uh, these settings work. I would have, would have imagined that what's just happened now would happen much further up, but it's like changing it down from four to three had virtually no difference. And then to two made a little bit of difference, but then from two to one seemed to have made a much bigger jump than from four to two. So this is the problem with having only eight grind settings. What we actually need, by the looks of it, is quite a few more grind settings in between one and two. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back to grind size two, because that was okay. I'm gonna purge some more coffee through it so everything we've got in the basket is a two, and I'm gonna try a long black. I'm changing it to long black, and I suspect that's gonna be Americana. Long black, it should really be water first, an espresso, but, Let's find out. I've just answered that question when I was doing the purge. It is actually hot water first, so that's an interesting discovery. So we're getting the water first. Pre-infusion, another shot. The, I'm not that impressed with the uh, pressure gauge because one, no idea what that is because there's no numbers. But if you're imagining nine was straight up, it doesn't seem to work very well because this is running what I would say pretty fast. Yet it seemed to be too much pressure. If that was nine bars, it's, we seem to be running about ten bars. But I don't know. Who knows, maybe it's set to 10 bars or, I'm not sure if it actually says on the website, but anyway, long black. And you know what? I've given that, that it's a pretty, look, pretty good looking long black. It's chuffing hot and that tastes really good. Again, it'll be slightly under extracted because it's running a little bit quick but by the time you've diluted it with I don't know how, how much water is in there a couple hundred ml of water or if you're making a milky by the time you've mixed it with milk you're really not going to taste that anyway but hmm that's interesting if you like long blacks then you might like this machine Especially if you're going to be happy just to crank it to, you know, grind size two or three, leave it at that. If you wanted to dial in with various different beans, adjusting the grind adjustment's a bit weird and, you, you know, you've only got eight grind settings, but I've got to give it to it. The long black is all right. It is actually a long black because it was water first. It's hot and that's decent. Last thing to do is try the steam one because we've not done that so let's try the steam one and we'll make some form of milky cappuccino flat white let's have a crack at that about 10 seconds steam ready pretty good from shot ready uh, from shot to steam about 10 seconds for that ripping paper sound, that intermittent ripping paper sound at first, just until the jug's warm. So you're carrying on, aerating, just gentle aeration, that hissing sound. And then, Raising the jug when it feels fairly hot to touch. And then it's about 60, 65 degrees. I'm stopping it. Because you don't want to burn the milk. 
purge. Wipe the wand, always do that. If you don't want the white steam on, it's horrible. Caked in rank milk. Isn't what you want, in my humble opinion. So I'm just swirling the milk to sort of polish it off. And then let's see what it's like. That's not bad. Cheers. So you've seen me using the DeLonghi Les Specialist Arte, and I'll tell you what I think of it. And I think you probably know what I think of it from what I said when I was using it. It's nearly there. It's a little bit frustrating because they've presented this really nice home barista looking setup with this lovely barista kit with a matching tamper and porter filter and this little really nice tamping mat and porter filter stand with the dosing ring and the cup riser. You know, it all screams home barista, but that grinder doesn't scream home barista, scream home barista at all with eight grind settings and that really frustrating adjustment. So when you change the adjustment, it sort of clicks into place and then there's a lot of play and it's really disconcerting. You know, it's just strange. And I don't know if that play, I don't think it does, but I don't know if that play actually adjusts at all. I don't think it does. I think it clicks into place and then this, you know, this wheel just, there's a lot of play in it when you've, once you've clicked it in, once you've set it at the new grind setting, which is weird. And as you saw from grind setting four to three, there was virtually no difference. And then from uh, three to two, and then from two to one, it was a massive difference. So it's as if in the coarser range, there's not much difference from one setting to the other. The, the jumps aren't as big, but then when you get down to the finer range, it's, it, you know, it just changes hugely. And I don't know why that is. Um, I can't think they would have designed it like that on purpose, but for me, it's as if you need another 10 or 20 adjustments between one and two, because that that is where we needed to more finely tuned. And I'm not even talking about really precisely dialing in because I don't think these kind of machines are for precisely dialing in. They're for getting within a ballpark and then leaving. That's what I think most people do. And with the Sage Brister Express with 18 grind settings, it isn't perfect, but you know, you can get ballpark dialing, dialed in. And with the uh, Sage Brister Pro, which has 30 grind settings, again, that's not perfect, but you can get sort of ballpark dialed in with it. You know, you, the there is enough adjustment there to get somewhere near. If you want precision, you don't want to go for an integrated grinder machine. You want to go for separate machines and the more money you spend on the grinder, the, the better. But that's a discussion for another video. But the Sage Barista Express, Sage Barista Pro, Sage Barista Touch, the Sage Oracle and Oracle Touch, the grinding on that is okay for these kind of machines. You can get what I call ballpark dialed in, you can get, you know, about right. But with this, they're just, as I said, it's just weird. There's only eight grinding settings and, you know, the around the middle do, don't seem to change much. And then when you get finer, it just jumps ridiculously. So the grinder doesn't live up to the rest of the machine. The other weird thing is that you don't appear to be able to take the hopper off and you don't appear to be able to get to the top burst, remove the top burst. There's no instructions for doing that. I've had a go and I can't seem to do it. And I've heard that a few people have tried that and they've managed to do it, but when they put the top bird back on, the machine just doesn't work. They can't get it to grind again. I've, I've heard of a few people who've done that, two or three people. Um, so it just appears that it's not made to be able to take the top burr out. But if that's the case, how the heck are you supposed to clean it? You need to be able to clean the burrs. So if you can't even get to the top burr, how, how do you keep it clean? I mean, all right, you could put purely grinds or whatever, or some people put... Um, rice so you could do something like that but i would expect to be able to get the top burrs out and clean them and the pressure gauge 
you know, we don't know what this optimal range, what is it? What's it set to? What's the OPV, the overpressure valve, or is there one? Or is it delivering 15 bars of pressure? I don't think it is delivering 15 bars of pressure into the basket because there wasn't a big crate has been created in the put, which would normally happen when you're using um, a cheap espresso machine with no overpressure valve for the 15 bar pump delivering that all into the, into the uh, coffee. So I don't think so. I think there is an overpressure valve, but we don't know what it is. We don't know if it's set to nine bars. We don't know what this is. So this pressure gauge for me is just a gimmick. It doesn't really tell you anything. We were in the optimal range, according to this, when we were really quite under extracted and running far too fast. So if that's optimal range, then it is a gimmick. That's not right, because we weren't in the optimal range at all. Everything else, I'm impressed with it. I'm really impressed with the long black button. I don't know of any other machine that's got a long black button. And long black for me should always be hot water first and then espresso. And we've got a really, what I would class as a really good long black with that, you know, one touch long black button. So impressed with that. If you like long blacks, then you might like this machine because that, as I say, that's quite rare to have a long black button. The steam wand, really good steam Ready time, about 10 seconds, not bad at all. Similar, I think, to the Barista Express. And single hole steam tip, and the, the steam in time and the steam in pressure, very similar to the Barista Express. And it did a really good job of steaming up there, as you saw. Again, very, very similar to the Barista Express. So in many ways, I'm impressed with what the longer you've done with this machine. I didn't expect them to get them bits so right, if they got them bits right and these bits right, I would be singing the praises of this machine. But unfortunately, as I say, it's just slightly fallen down. Maybe they'll bring out another version, a different, um, you know, maybe they're already working on a version with a grinder that lives up to the rest of the machine. And hopefully with that, they'll, um, they'll do something with the pressure gauge as well and at least tell us what this equates to. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to click the like button. Thanks. Scientists are exploring the possibility of growing homes from living fungus and that's got absolutely nothing to do with clicking the like button. Correct, but click it anyway. Cheers. And don't forget to become an official coffee botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere of my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.